man. Good to uh, hear from Alex and Mary. It's been a long time. <laughs> and uh, good to see them back home. Amen. And I know they have a heart for their own people in the Philippines. And uh, they're praying about going back there. I know, right? Sometime in the near future. And I know they would love to see you over there as well. But we're glad you're here for now. And uh, Mary looks good. Mary at one time wasn't talking, but you can see she got her voice back really good. <laughs> Thank you, Mary and Alex, for your testimony. You know, a lot of people say, I love my wife, I love my husband, but you know, you show your faith, James says, by your what? Works. Well, not saved by works, but people can't see your faith. So I'll show you my faith by my works. <laughs> I'll show you I love you by my works as well. Amen. And that's a good, good lesson for us as husbands uh, to take care of our wives and vice versa. But uh, we appreciate that. And it's something that's good for our young folks to see as well. You make a commitment, you get married to someone, the two become one. And when something happens to the one, you're involved. It's you that you're dealing with the same Flesh, to become one flesh. That's a, pro a problem in our society today. People don't understand when they're getting married, they become one. They still think they're two, and the, there's no unity, and never was in the marriage. And that's why we believe Christians should marry Christians, amen? They have the same father. We always, uh, we kind of joke, but it's not a joke. When we tell a person marries an unsaved person, your father-in-law is the devil, right? Remember, Jesus said, Ye are of your father the devil to those that are lost, and your spiritual father, if you're not saved, is the devil. Well, anyway, thank you for that. We have a new little screen up here. It's the first time I'm using this because uh, Brother Wayne put this in a couple of weeks ago, and then Phil came last week, Savlovsky, and he got to use it. Now I'm using it, and it's nice. I really like it, Wayne. It's right there. What you're seeing up there, I'm seeing on this screen. And there, Terry had something installed in here. Wayne didn't know about this. It's a little box on the bottom. It's just for me. Terry put a little, I love you, honey. You look so sweet. <laughs> That's not true. I, I wish that was true. <laughs> or, or maybe she'll put some, yeah, you're talking too much, you know, things like that. <laughs> she had, what's the sign for this? <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11. Alex and Mary must have known my message is short today, so it worked out good. I know Kenny back there looking at the clock. I always try to make the service about an hour. We don't want to keep people uh, sitting in the seat too long. It does something to your mind when you're sitting too long. It's connected, you know. But we, as you know, we do verse by verse uh, study of, of books in the Bible, and we're looking at Hebrews. Today it's Abraham's faith. We looked already at Abel, we mentioned Old Testament saints, Enoch, Noah, and now Abraham, and many more after this, this great chapter of we call the Hall of Faith, right, in the Bible. Chapters 1 through 10, again, Paul, we believe the human writer, this is God's Word, inspired by God's Holy Spirit, we know that, but God used Paul, we believe, to tell those saved Jews, like Phil Sobolowski, to get them to see, or the unsaved Jew, why Jesus is better, better than the prophets, remember? Better than Moses, better than the law. In fact, he fulfilled the law. Better than the Old Testament priestly system of sacrifices that was saved by the blood of Christ. And so he comes now to chapter 11, and it started toward the end of chapter 10 about faith. Verse 38 of chapter 10, you know this verse, the just shall live by faith, right? And now in chapter 11, we looked at the first lesson in verse 1 about a description of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, but sounds like hoped for, like, you know, we really don't have it. No, but it says substance. There's something uh, material of substance that we are trusting in. So faith is not just blindly trusting in nothing. Then it says the evidence, another, uh, again, fact, that, is that there is something there, but it's not seen, not visible, because if it was seen, it's not faith anymore, right? The Bible says we, we walk by faith, not by sight. But there's something that we're trusting in, the substance and the evidence. And here, he starts a list. Starts actually in verse 4, where he talks about Abel, and then Enoch, 
and then Noah, which we've already covered. And today in verse 8, we start by faith, Abraham. We want to look at Abraham's faith. I only have two points today. I'm, I was not lying to you, and I said I have a short message, but you know, you know how we pastors are. <laughs> we have to just get it off of our system, get it out there. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm promising you that we'll be done at least before you go to bed tonight. All right, I promise you that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Abraham's faith, we're going to see, was an obedient, and this is important when it comes even to our faith or anyone's faith, especially today in 2022, an obedient, hopeful faith. Abraham demonstrates in this great chapter one of the greatest examples of faith in the Bible, in the Word of God. He, he believed faith against all odds and endured what he did was probably something most of us would like to say we would do, but we might not. All right, Abraham's faith was an obedient, believing, and a hopeful faith. See, when you say you have faith, you have to demonstrate what you're believing in by your actions, like James says. And kind of, I always allude to the movie, <laughs> like Mary, I like musicals too. My Fair Lady, right? She said, don't talk of love. Show me! And I don't say you love me, show me by your actions. And the same thing with faith. He showed, he obeyed. So my first point here, Abraham's faith was a faith that obeyed, all right, and hoped in God. Look at verse 8 and 9 again, Hebrews 11, 8 and 9. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance. He didn't know it at the time. He was just told to go and he went. He obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. How many of us would do that? Uh, by faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, strange to him, dwelling in tabernacles and tents with Isaac, his son, and Jacob, his grandson, the heirs with him of the same promise, the Abrahamic covenant, right? Two things about Abraham's faith here. I said we have two points, but with Francis, I always say we have an outline. We used to put it in the bulletin, remember? We have only two points, but we have about 25 subpoints. <laughs> only kidding. Point, there's only two under point one. <laughs> First, Abraham had a great call. We always say if you're in the ministry, you're ministering, you're pastoring, you're an elder in the church, it's a calling. God calls you. It's a special call and to be obeyed. God called and challenged Abraham to be a witness for the world of the one and only true God. God challenged Abraham to leave to separate himself from his family and his home, his friends, his work, whatever it was. He was not, you say, uh, oh, Abraham, uh, Jerusalem, Israel? No, Ur, Ur of the Chaldees, right? He was a Chaldean. And so God called him. I'm going to read real quick here, Genesis chapter 12. It should be up on your screen there. Thank you, Terry. Oh, I love you too, by the way. I see it on your <laughs> screen. Genesis 12, 1 through 5. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, again his name at, at one time, the Old Testament name, get thee out of thy country. So God appears to you and says, get thee out of wherever it is you're from. Thank the Lord I got out of Jersey City. All right, God said, <laughs> get thee out of Jersey City. Get thee out of thy country, Abram, and from thy kindred, his family, from thy father's house unto a land I will show thee. He didn't even tell him where it was. Just, just get out and start going. Start moving. And if you do that, I'll make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee, make thy name great. Thou shalt be a blessing. So even though God said that to some people, some people, would, I wouldn't care what God gave me or said. I, I'm, I'm comfortable here. Uh, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm not going to obey your call. I will bless them that bless thee. And remember, Phil brought this out. And curse him that curseth thee. And in thee, Abraham, shall all families of the earth be blessed. So here's the obedience. Abram departed. That's immediate. Straightway, the Bible would say, right? As the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot, that's his nephew, went with him, and Abram was not 25 years old, or 30, or 40, or 50, 75. All right, I'm not 75 yet. Anybody 75 here older? Sorry, you don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> 75, when he departed out of Haran, and Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and all the souls they had gotten in Haran. There was a little group there. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. Now listen, if Abraham by faith, 
as God told him, would heed and obey his call. Get thee out. Get up. Leave. If he did that, God would do three wonderful things. What did he do? He said he'd cause a people to be born from his seed. From Abraham on down, from him and Sarah's offspring, he would bring forth a new group of people, eventually, as we know today, the nation of Israel. Second, God would bless not just Israel, all nations through his seed. What's that? Well, that's through the Messiah would come, if you look all the way back genealogically, to Abraham. And then third, God would give him the land, the promised land of Canaan. Uh, quite a promise there. And uh, Abraham now had to think about all this and either reject it, which he could have, I guess, or act on faith and believe what God said. And that's my second point. First, God gave Abraham a great call. Second, he obeyed God. He obeyed God and believed God. Take note of the faith Abraham had. Look at verse 8 again. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. Really, it's very simple but very uh, drastic move on, by, by great faith on Abraham's part. To tell, God come to tell you you have to leave everything, leave your family, your home, your career, whatever it is, your aspirations. I have something better for you. He didn't know it at the time, but of course, well, thank the Lord, he obeyed. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Could you imagine that? Now, somebody may come to you and say, we have a a new opportunity for you, a position in a growing company. You know, you're going to know maybe what you're going to make, what, it, what kind of position, what kind of work, and where maybe you're going to be moving to, and then you'll have to make a decision. God says, hey, just get up and go, and you just go. I'm not telling you where you're going. Just do it. How many would do that? <laughs> How many would do it by faith, not even knowing where to go? He obeyed God. He believed God by faith. Something about his faith here. He had a decisive, obedient faith. We always say, you know, God says it, I believe it, and that settles it. Listen, it's one thing to say, I believe the Bible. It's another thing to act. Act. We always say, don't be just hearers of the word, right? What's the Bible say? Be doers of the word. We believe God's, this is God's word, not just any book. It's a living book. Uh, a spirit-filled, inspired book, and a book to live by, inerrant, preserved for us to tell us about God, and again, again, how to live the Christian life. He had a decisive, he obeyed not knowing, and he acted immediately. He didn't hesitate, he didn't argue with God, he didn't question it, he didn't put out a fleece, <laughs> he didn't equivocate, he didn't go back and forth, what's the benefit for me? You know, he didn't make a list, the good points, the negative points. He just obeyed. Wouldn't it be nice if believers started obeying God again? Whatever it is, God says, marriage is between a man and a woman. That's what God said. I didn't make that. God made marriage. Amen? <laughs> and I believe it. God made a, a man, Adam, and he made a woman from his side, Eve, all right, uh, we have two sexes in the world today. God made it that way. We don't have, someone once uh, said recently at uh, one of these colleges, so-called college, it was supposed to be teaching our young people things, right? There's a hundreds of sexes. Sure there is not, amen? Two sexes, man and woman. Marriage is supposed to be between one man and one woman for life until death do they part. He had a obedient faith. He acted without hesitation. Why? Because it was God who was telling him. Now, you may not trust another human being. I, I don't doubt you for that, but he obeyed and trusted God, and it was an immediate, decisive. Abraham didn't know where he was going. He didn't know where God was leading yet. He just believed by faith the promises of God and acted on his faith. He believed and he obeyed. A person who believes God, listen, truly believes God obeys God. This is simple. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> Why wouldn't we believe God? There's no such thing as belief without obedience, not genuine belief. If you believe God, and we say we believe his word, then why wouldn't we act upon it? God says, uh, if all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Why would we doubt that? If people call on God, they're not saved. 
A person who sees their sinfulness and repentance turns and trusts Christ by faith, what he did over 2,000 years ago on the cross, and says, I'm, uh, I'm trusting Christ for my salvation. I have eternal life, a present possession. That's what, that's what the Bible says, and we believe that. And then, then we act on it by telling others about Christ. We've been commanded. We have the Great Commission. It's not, well, if you feel like it, no, we've been commissioned by God himself. Go into all the world and preach the what? The gospel, the death, burial, resurrection of Christ. To who? Every creature. Now, we have to decide what a creature is. I'd say it's everyone that's breathing, all right? That's, that's who we must reach. A person who believes God always obeys God. No person knows. We don't know. That's what faith is all about, exactly where it's leading, the end. We know the end of our faith in heaven, but when God gives us an assignment on this earth like he gave to Abraham, he didn't tell him where to go. He just said, get up and leave and go. I always say, how many of us would do that? I'd like to think I would. But he's not to fear. Faith is the absence of fear in following God. God is a perfect, loving God and has good things in store for believers who follow him as he calls us. If we draw back, we don't follow God, we're going to miss out on the blessings, I believe, for what he had for us. He'll use somebody else. We always say a church who's not preaching and going after souls will raise up another group of Christians who will be obedient to him. I want to be the one that trusts the Lord. I don't know about you. And so, number one, we said he had Abraham a decisive, immediate, <laughs> obedient faith. And then second, he had a hopeful, he had a hopeful, obedient faith. Abraham, listen, Abraham never received the inheritance of the promised land. Remember, Moses himself didn't get into the promised land because he disobeyed God. He had a chance to go up on a mountain and look out over it. But who went in? Joshua went in and Caleb, but not Moses. And Abraham didn't see it either. He never saw a nation of people born from his seed in his lifetime. Abraham never owned a piece of land on which he could settle and live. He says here he was a sojourner. He went from place to place wandering in a strange country. He lived, though, to a ripe old age. We know that. Saw his son and his grandson born, and he witnessed them becoming the heirs of that promise, which was, again, by faith. We're going to talk about Isaac. We're going to talk about Jacob here in chapter 11, the great hall of faith. Abraham believed God. Again, never saw the land, never saw the promises that were fulfilled. He sees it from heaven, but he didn't see it back then. That's what faith is. But he still believed in the hope God gave him. He believed so strongly, he even taught these to his son and his grandson Jacob. Genesis chapter 15, verses 5 through 7 say this, And God brought him, that's Abraham, forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. I'm sure Abraham looked up and saw the stars. You ever look at the stars on a nice dark night? <laughs> Maybe up in the mountains of New York somewhere, New York State, the Adirondack Mountains. <laughs> beautiful mountains. What did he do? He said, so shall thy seed be. Can you imagine? He didn't see that, but by faith he trusted. And you know what? It, it, it came to pass. For he looked for, through the eyes of faith, a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. That's faith. He never saw that, but he believed it by faith. You know what? God counted him righteous or saved because of his faith. This is a phenomenal declaration here. Abraham's reward, which he didn't see in this life, was a great city which had foundations whose builder and maker is God, the great heavenly city. We say, oh, Jerusalem. No, he's talking about beyond that, the great new Jerusalem or the heavenly city. Verse 10 plainly says Abraham's faith was a faith that looked beyond this world to heaven. We're living in a perilous, we believe, the last days, the next event on God's calendar prophetically would be the trumpet sounds and we're out of here amen the rapture of the saints the rapture of the church abraham believed in a heavenly city of god a future life that would put him in god's presence forever and ever and this is exactly what is declared in this scripture the point we want to see here in hebrews now chapter 11 in these verses we looked at today is the faith 
of Abraham, the great faith. He believed that God was going to give him the land of Canaan, which was just a picture of the future homeland in heaven. And because Abraham by faith believed, and was, he was counted righteous. What does it say that? Genesis 15, 6. And he believed God and the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Now, the Old Testament, again, Christ not born yet. The promised Messiah hadn't come, but they looked ahead by faith to the day when the promises would be fulfilled in Christ. Today, we trust Christ. He already, the cross is a thing of the past over 2,000 years ago, and we receive by faith the imputed righteousness of Christ. That means Christ's account of sinlessness is imputed to my sinful account. I always use the illustration of this tiny eight and a half by 11. If all my sins were listed here, well, I might need to scroll from here to the back door, but let's say my sins were listed here. This is what Terry thinks about me. Not a bad guy. A few sins, but not too bad. <laughs> and then I'm using you a lot today, Terry, in this sermon. I don't know. I'm in trouble. The back here, <laughs> this blank sheet, this is Jesus' sins. <laughs> His record Perfect. And when we trust Christ by faith, like Abraham trusted in the coming Messiah and believed God, he says he had imputed righteousness. Righteousness was given to him that he didn't deserve and none of us deserve. And we have the righteousness of Christ. Romans chapter 4, verse 13 says, For the promise that he should be their heir of the world, he should be the heir of the world, was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Keeping the law, you don't get imputed righteousness from that, amen? It's by faith. It's by faith. Not keeping the law that saves, but faith. No one can keep the law. The law is good, good guide for living, but it's not, not, not going to save us. Christ came so that we can trust him. Abraham's faith, we said, was a faith that obeyed and hoped or trusted in the promises of God. Have you this morning ever been a time in your life when you turned in repentance and then in faith trusted Christ as your personal Savior? He died for us 2,000 plus years ago. His blood, his sinless, precious blood was shed. His, the gospel, his death, his burial, and most importantly, his resurrection to prove who he was. Your faith in that and that alone is what gives you a gift the Bible calls the free gift of eternal life. What we had before trust in Christ was eternal death. The Bible calls it the second death, Revelation 2014 says, death and hell will be cast into the lake of fire. This is the what? Second death. First death is a physical death. Body and soul separate. The second death is separation from God forever. See, saved and unsaved human beings... We're made in God's image and likeness. We have an eternal soul, and it's going to eternally live with him in heaven, or it's going to eternally be separated from God in hell. I don't know about you. No one in their right mind would say, I want to die and go to hell and be eternally separated from my creator God. No, no one would want to do that. But yet people will find all kinds of reasons not to do what God said you must do to be saved. <laughs> Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you've never trusted Christ by faith, we'd like to show you what the Bible says about that. And you could see one of uh, the men or the ladies, another lady after the service, and share the gospel, the good news of eternal life in Christ. Maybe you're here today and you say, I'm a believer. I've trusted Christ. There was a day in my life when I turned to Christ and in faith trusted him as my personal Savior. And that's great. Amen. Aren't you glad you're saved today? But you need to share the good news and, you know, faith isn't a one-time thing. We're saved by faith, right? Galatians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith. It's not a, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But we live by faith. We live from that moment till we see the Lord face to face. And Abraham, a great man of faith, obeyed the call of God, and he did it, what, instantly. <laughs> we always say, uh, I got this from... Pastor Sexton, I want to give him the credit for it because I didn't make this up. He said there's not good and bad Christians. You have obedient and disobedient Christians. You either obey the Bible, God's Word, or you're disobedient to it. And, of course, that makes you a bad Christian. But 
Have you trusted Christ? Let's talk to you after the service. We're going to have a song here in a moment. Brother John's going to come. But if you are and you've trusted Christ, amen. May we, myself included, have the faith of Abraham to do what God says to do. How are you going to know what God wants you to do? Right here in his word, amen. We want to be doers, amen, doers of the word and not just hearers only. Anyone can listen and listen to preaching and teaching and we listened to Brother Phil last week, had a great time. But now, what are we going to do? The, the time, what we call invitation time here, is a time of decision. Time of doing with what you've heard from God's Word and now doing something about it. Help, let, allow God's Word by faith to change your life, like it did with Abraham. Thank the Lord for Abraham. The Gentiles were grafted in. <laughs> you know, I, I used to get upset when it says in the Bible to the Jew first. I'm like, why so special? Well, they had the Old Testament. The Greeks, the heathens didn't have it. They should have run to Christ, every one of them, because of what they had in the Old Testament. But as a nation, they didn't. Individual Jews, yes. The first believers in the New Testament, time of Christ, were mostly Jews. Paul, Saul, a Jew, when he got saved on the road to Damascus, the giant light bulb went off. And what did he do? He went to the synagogues. Those, hoping they would see the same thing he did, the fulfillment of all the prophecy. But most of them didn't. Paul, the New Testament fugitive, was chased by the same people that killed Christ because they didn't believe he was the Messiah. What could come good out of what? Nazareth? They had all that scripture. And so now the, we, Jew and Gentile, both must come to Christ the same way, by faith, trusting Christ. I was uh, 27 years old, a, a lady in my practice, I was a chiropractor at the time in Florida, led me and my wife then, Margaret, to a saving knowledge of Christ. July 8, 1982, it was a Thursday night, about 8.30 in the evening, she came to our home, shared the gospel for an hour and a half. It took me a little while, I'm a little hard-headed, and uh, we trusted Christ by faith. That Sunday, July 11th, we went to the church she attended, and we made it public and profession. We were baptized into the membership of that church and have uh, tried the best we can, serving the Lord ever since. Greatest decision of our lives, amen? If you're saved, you would say the same thing. And now we want to share that. We want to give the good news to other folks as well. Well, listen, I pray God spoke to your heart this morning, either by our brother Alex's message and Mary about trusting Christ, even through difficult situations like they were in. May you, if you're here today, haven't trusted Christ, see me after the service. We'd love to share our faith with you. If you have, let's go out from here. I'd like to get that exit sign on the back door and put, now you are leaving the church, you are entering your mission field, amen? Let's be faithful to share the good news. Father, we thank you for your love for us, for the message in your word of life-saving gospel of the grace of God. Thank you for Christ and what he did. Thank you for Abraham, who by faith left his country and everything he had and was obedient to you and a great nation was started through him and through his obedience lord you you blessed him with so many things and now he's looking at it in heaven lord what you've done and you kept your promises he acted by faith not seeing it at the time but seeing it now thank you for his faith thank you for the faith of those here who have trusted lord may others do likewise bless our time now together here in Jesus' name we pray, amen.